All right, guys, uh, welcome back. To, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at some more algebra review. Mostly, this is going to be a be review from the last two days. So there will be some radicals and some equations. But in the quizzes that you'll do as your assignment today, there is a little bit of fraction work. And so we're just going to review four fraction problems real fast, just to review how to multiply, divide, add, and subtract different fractions, just in case uh, you've forgotten over the summer. It's, it's been a while. While. So we're just going to run through some problems real fast and we'll go from there. Once you watch this video, then go ahead and jump in to doing the actual quizzes. You can take it up to two times. Uh, let's see if I can actually find my pen here. There we go. Um, so you can take it up to two times if you want. Um, if you don't like your score the first time or if there's some things you need to brush up on, but you do need to take the quizzes in order to see, receive credit for the work um, here. So let's take a look at some multiplying of two fractions. So remember when we multiply fractions together, it's actually probably the easiest of the four. What we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply across the top. So you have one times four on the top and on the bottom we're going to multiply these guys. I have two times three so I see that these guys are equal to each other and so I end up with four over six. And then I see four over six let's just double check to make sure we can't reduce it. Well actually I can divide top and bottom by two right so this should hopefully be an easy problem um, that we remember how to do different fraction work and if not it's a good review to take a look at. All right, so one half times four thirds, you end up with two thirds. So let's take a look at a division problem here. So I've got three eighths divided by 11 eighths, or 11 sixths, I'm sorry. So remember, division is the inverse of multiplication. So we're going to do the same thing we did with multiplication, but before we do that, um, we remember that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal is a fancy word for a flipped fraction. So I can think of this as being the same thing as 3 eighths times, then I'm going to flip my fraction, 6 over 11. So I uh, keep the first fraction, I change the sign, and I flip the second fraction. If you remember your keep, change, flip from before. Um, so 3 times 6, and we're just going to multiply this as normal. 3 times 6, that's going to be 24. And then 8 times 11 is 88. And once again, let's see if we can divide anything out here. Well, I know I can divide... Uh, I'm sorry, that's not 24, is it? Man, that's 18. So... Yeah, maybe I've been off on summer too long too. So let's see, we can divide both these by uh, what looks like two. So let's divide top and bottom by two, and this comes out to nine over 44. And I think that's as far as we're gonna simplify that. So that'll be my final answer here, nine over 44. Sorry about that mistake here. Um, even I've had a little too long of a vacation sometimes. All right, let's take a look at some addition here. So I'm gonna add two fractions together. And so I have one half plus four thirds. And I try to keep the fractions pretty simple um, just so that we remember how to get a common denominator. When we add fractions, we're going to look to get the denominator to be the same. And then we'll add across the top and we'll keep the denominators the same. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I want some common denominator between one half and four thirds. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the denominator of the first fraction two and I'm gonna multiply top and bottom of my second fraction by two over two. Now two over two, that's just a fancy form of one, right? So that's okay for me to do that. I'm not actually changing the problem. And let's do the same thing over here. Let's take top and bottom, let's multiply it by three. And then let's go ahead and multiply and see if we don't get a common denominator. Three times one, that's gonna be three over six, plus four times two is eight. Three times two is six. There's my common denominator. Now I can add across the top, and this is going to be 11 over six. Now, a common mistake here would be to make this 11 over 12. Remember when we're adding, it's not like multiplying. We don't um, add the two denominators together. We only multiply the two denominators if it's multiplication or division. In this case, it's addition, so we're just going to leave the six there. If I have three sixths plus eight sixths, how many sixths do I have in total? I have 11 sixths. All right, let's look at our last problem. All right, let's look at a subtraction problem. Now, once again, this is going to act very similarly, similarly to my addition problem. But notice here, I have some mixed numbers. So remember, when we're dealing with fractions, it's a lot easier to deal with improper fractions than it is to deal with mixed numbers. 
So this is what we're gonna do. We're going to go ahead and take these mixed numbers and turn them into um, turn them into improper fractions. So I have seven here, seven holes. If I wanna think about how many fifths that is, I'm gonna to multiply top and bottom um, here. We can think about this seven over one. We're gonna to multiply top and bottom here by five because I want a uh, I want to know how many fifths do I have in total. Well, I've got uh, 35 fifths plus 3 fifths. Okay, and that's just kind of on this one side here. And let's do the same thing here. I want to know how many sevenths are in 3. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 7. I get 21 over 7. Um, and then we're going to add our 1 seventh here. So. Once again, we're trying to get improper fractions, so I need a common denominator for my holes on the left and then one for the holes on the right. So let's rewrite this problem. We've got 38 over 5 minus 22 over 7. All right, um, so at this point, now we're looking at this saying, okay, now I need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by 5. I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by 7. So this is actually going to turn out to be kind of messy. Um, but let's take a look. We'll uh, take this up here. So let's do the right side. That's going to be the easier side. So that's 110 over 5 times 7. That's going to be 35. Okay. Now let's do the left side here. So that's easy. That's 35. So let's think about this. 7 times 38. Well, 7 times 40 would be 280 minus 14, so that would be 266. Um, but you could use a calculator for that or do it by hand. Let's make sure that math works out. Yes, it does. Okay, so now we've got a common denominator. I don't think the problem on the quizzes will be this complicated, but you might get some with some larger numbers, and if you need to use a calculator for some of your multiplication. Um, and let's go ahead and subtract, and then we'll wrap this thing up. So I've got... Uh, what looks like 156 all over 35. And uh, 7 doesn't divide into 156 and 5 doesn't either. So that is as far as we can reduce that. So our final answer here is 156 over 35. Now you could turn that back into a mixed number if you wanted to to see how many sets of 35 you can get in there. You should get uh, four sets of 35 and have 14 remainder if you wanted to. Uh, we'll just actually write it out here. You could have four and 14 over 35. You could also write it like that. My preference is for uh, improper fractions, uh, but you could also write it that way as well. So this is just a real quick review on how to add or subtract, multiply, divide different fractions together. Hopefully that's all a refresher. This is um, a lot of algebra work, but I know it's been a little while. Um, so if you make mistakes, it's okay. We're still working our way into some of the math after having taken a good amount of time off. So after watching this, go ahead and complete the quizzes. It's linked on Classroom, and uh, that'll be your work to get the grade for that.